This lesson is on modeling with linear equations. Many real world situations can be modeled using linear relations or linear equations. Uh, and these situations involve two variables, the independent variable often labeled x and the dependent variable often labeled y. And when we have two or more linear equations, we have a system of equations. So the term system of equations refers to two or more equations. They don't necessarily have to be linear. They could just be equations, and we have a system of equations. So, for example, uh, suppose we were given the two equations 2x plus 3y equals 8 and 5x minus 2y equals 1. This is a system of equations. There are two equations and two variables, x and y. Now, a solution to a system of equations is an ordered pair, x, y, that satisfies all the equations in the system. So, in other words, if you can plug the ordered pair into both equations and make both equations true, then it's a solution to the system. Okay? So, for example, 1, 2 is a solution to the given linear system. Now, if you recall, the linear system we gave a minute ago had two equations. 2x plus 3y equals 8, and 5x minus 2y equals 1. Well, how do we show that 1, 2 is a solution? Simple. We plug in 1 for x and 2 for y, and we show that it works in both equations. 2 plus 6 equals 8. That's true. When we plug in 1 for x and 2 for y in the second equation, we get 5 minus 4 equals 1, and that's true. So 1, 2 we determine is a point on the first line, and 1, 2 is also a point on the second line. And since it's a point on both lines, we say it's a solution to the system. Now a linear system of equations might have no solutions, it might have one solution, or it might have an infinite number of solutions. And those solutions refer to the points of intersection. So think about it, my very rough diagram. You could have two lines that are parallel and never intersect. Well, this would be an example of a linear system that has no solutions, no points of intersection. You could also have uh, two lines that intersect only once. And this is perhaps the most common scenario. And when you have two lines that only intersect once, that system of equations has one solution. And finally, you can have two lines, which is really the same line written twice, and those two lines overlap entirely and therefore have an infinite number of solutions. So there's those three possibilities. So in this uh, first example, we're going to determine whether the ordered pair 4, negative 2 is a solution to the system of equations given. Well, we're going to plug in 4, negative 2 for 4 for x and negative 2 for y and see if we get a true statement on the first equation. 12 plus 8 minus 20 equals 0. That's true. The set, but it also has to work for the second equation. It can't just work for one of them. So the next one says y equals x minus 6. If I plug in negative 2 for y and 4 for x, I get negative 2 equals 4 minus 6. Well, that's true. So it works for both. So the point 4, negative 2 is a solution to the system of equations we were given. Well, uh, what if we have the ordered pair 2, negative 3, and the system of equations is given by these two equations? Let's try it out. Let's try the first one. I'm going to plug in 2 for x and negative 3 for y. And I get negative 3 equals 8 plus 1. Well, that's definitely false. So as soon as it doesn't work for one of the equations, you don't even have to try it for the other one. You can say right away, this is not a solution to the system of equations. So the point 2, negative 3 is not a solution. Now, we're going to move on to what we call let statements. And um, let statements, as you'll see, uh, let the reader know what your um, designing the variables to represent. 
So we're going to construct an equation in each of the following situations and we're going to include let statements. So the first one says Gary is thinking of two numbers. The sum of the numbers is 13 and 6 times the first number less 7 times the second number is 26. We want to determine the numbers. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to let x represent the first number. And we're going to let y represent the second number. And when we do that, the first number plus the second number is 13. And 6 times the first number less 7 times the second number is 26. Well, we have two variables and we have two equations. And so we have ourselves a system of equations. In our next one, we see Charmaine has 25 coins in her pocket. And all the coins are either quarters or dimes. And she has a grand total of $4.90, and so we want to know how much of each coin she has. Well, here we go. We're going to, um, we want to know how many quarters she has and how many dimes she has. So we're going to let Q be the number of quarters she has, and we're going to let D be the number of dimes she has. Well, we know that if you took all the quarters and all the dimes and just added them up and counted the coins, you'd have 25. So Q plus D equals 25. But we know that the value of them is 490. The value of a quarter is uh, $0.25. So if you have Q quarters, you have 0.25 Q in, uh, in money. And secondly, the value of a dime is $0.10. So the value of D dimes is 0.10 D dollars. And so if you took the money you have in quarters and added the money you have in dimes, you'd have a grand total of 490. Well, we've got here two equations, two unknowns. We have a system of equations. Next one here is Jojo's mother. Jojo's mother is four times older than Jojo. And um, also, we know that Jojo's mother's age plus three times Jojo's age is 70. And we want to know how old Jojo and her mother are. So, what we're going to do is we're going to say, first of all, we want the two numbers we're looking for are Jojo's age and Jojo's mother's age. So we're going to let J be Jojo's age. And we're going to let M be Jojo's mother's age. And the first thing you know is that her mother is four times older than Jojo. So M equals 4J. We also know that if we took Jojo's mother and added to her age three of Jojo's age, we'd have a grand total of 70. So we've got two different equations. We have a system of equations. In our next question, New Swan has $1,500 in the bank. Now some of that money is invested in a bank account earning 3% interest, and some of it's in a bank account earning 5% interest. And the total amount of interest that he earned after a year it's not stated in the question, but we assume after a year, is $53. So we want to know how much New Swan had in each bank account. Well, um, we're going to let T represent the amount of money that New Swan invested at 3%. And we're going to let F be the amount of money that he invested at 5%. Now, the amount that he invested at 3% added to the amount that he invested in five, at 5% is 1500 because that's how much money he had total. Now, if he invested T dollars at 0 0.03, or sorry, at 3%, he got back in interest 0.03 T. In other words, 3% of T. And if he invested F dollars at 5%, he got back 5% of F, or in other words, 0 0.05 of F. So this is the interest he earned in the 30 in the 3% account, and this is the interest he earned in the 5% account, and if you add these together, you get 53. We've got two equations and two unknowns. Our next question says that GG can rent a car from Enterprise and pay $40 per day as well as 15 cents per kilometer, or she can rent from Hertz and pay $60 per day and 10 cents per kilometer. We want to know how far she should drive in order for the costs to be the same. So we're going to let K be the number of kilometers driven. So in the first rental agency, uh, she pays $40 flat rate plus 
times the number of kilometers driven. And in the second one, she um, pays a $60 flat rate as well as 10 cents times the number of kilometers. And what they want to know is when these equal. So we have one equation. And we only have one independent variable, k. So we're going to know when does the rate at the first rental agency equal the rate at the second rental agency. In our next question, uh, we have Germain purchasing five slushies and seven freezies for $9.50, and Belinda purchasing six slushies and ten freezies for $13. And we want to know how much of each type of refreshment each person bought. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to let S be the number of slushies, and we're going to let F be the number of freezies. And we know that... Um, or sorry, this is not the number of slushies, this should be the price of a slushie. 